Across a vast continent comes a range of delicious dishes with flatbreads, spicy stews, great veggies and some unusual drinks. Welcome to some of the most interesting food on earth, the food of Africa. Join our food safari to learn how to make Nigeria's one-pot wonder, the colourful jollof rice, freshly cooked Ethiopian injera bread, a fast Abyssinian lamb dish, the tropical flavours of the Swahili coast, a guide to African carbs from fufu to plantains, and the fragrant coffee ceremony from the Horn of Africa. <laughs> East African food is fresh, it's vibrant, it's colourful and it's full of flavour and it is like a slap straight to your face from a chilli pepper. It's about love, it's about bonding and we all congregate around this massive circle and then you've got people feeding people, you've got people offering food and it's lovely. It is a fiesta that never ends. Karim Dagal grew up in a country area of Ethiopia before his family came to Australia as refugees in the mid-1990s. They opened Melbourne's first Ethiopian bread bakery and small grocery shop, specialising in East African ingredients. Spices are very important. There is not a dish in Ethiopia or in the whole East African region that doesn't have a spice of some sort. Is there one thing that everyone uses? Specifically, yes, and that's the cardamom pot seeds. And that's used from making dorawat to making nitrikabe um, to making uh, various stews of lentils or veggies. Really interesting one we've got is, uh, it's called tamiz. Tamiz. Tamiz, yeah. So how would you describe this flavour, Karim? A sweet touch of lavender. Oh. <laughs> It's lavender-like, but it's not lavender. But it's not yeah, lavender-like, yeah. yeah. Now, the mother of all loads, it is gold. It's, it's red gold. It's barbare. Um, it's a chilli powder. It's, it's a, a spice mix, though, isn't it? Yes, it is. It is sun-dried. Um, it is infused with cloves and ginger and ajwa. It is mixed with all spices. It's got timmers, salt, black mm. pepper. You could not cook authentic Ethiopian food without having barbare in it. Ghee is something that Ethiopian people love, don't you? Yes, yes we do. And it's used in every single dish. So that's clarified butter? That's clarified spiced butter and it's called nitrikabe. And what flavours are in this? Your cardamom pod seeds as well as kosarat. And that's a... A minty sort of thyme. Minty yeah. thyme. And then you'd use a bit of fennel as well. So if there's a cooking smell of Ethiopia, mm -hmm. it's nitrikabe. It's, it's kabe, yes. It's infused into an Ethiopian's house. Another Ethiopian favourite is ah, our popcorn. That is popcorn, yes. yes. It is. <laughs> and, and, and popcorn has to be there when you have coffee. Coffee ceremony is a very, very important thing in Ethiopia. I mean, Italians love their coffee, but the Ethiopians love their coffee even more. Coffee actually comes from the Kafa region. Um, it's an oral province in Ethiopia. We invented the stuff. Invented it? Yes, we did. <laughs> Nigerian Kunle Adeswa's shopping basket fills with very different ingredients. The West African palate preferring savoury flavours and staying clear of cheese, dairy products, sugar and wheat. But like East Africa, also loving their chilies. It is, must be present. If it's not present, uh, there's no cooking. In his quest to highlight the deliciousness of African food, Kunle manufactures products for his shop Tribal Tastes in Melbourne's Queen Victoria markets. Uh, this is a plantain used widely in African cuisine. Peel the skin off and then slice it, fry it, dry it, and it's, a, it's widely eaten across Africa. There are two types of oil extracted from the palm tree. One is from the kernel and one is from the fruit. We, this is fruit. This is fruit. This is pure palm fruit oil. We in West Africa have been using this oil from the dawn of time. We use it in cooking, we use it in frying, we use it in rituals. This is uh, superior to olive oil. This is the oil of the future. Smoked fish is so important in West African cuisine. It's culture. Culture? Yes. We actually use 
dried fish to pay dowry. Ah. This is a uh, smoked plums. Mm. Uh, in Nigeria and West Africa generally, some people will grind it up and use it to flavor their sauces. Now, Kunle, are those in this unusually named uh, jar? Oh, they call it shito. It's, and, it's uh, like a balachan, isn't it? Yeah, 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 it's something similar to that. Mm. And which countries use this? Uh, this is Ghana. If you want to win a Ghanaian man's heart, please don't forget a jar of shito. <laughs> Across Africa, carbohydrates are adored. They're filling and easy to prepare, low in cost and very satisfying. The standout is called fufu, made with the flour from either taro, cassava, plantain bananas or sorghum. The flour is stirred into water and then worked vigorously in a circular motion. The result somewhere between a porridge and a polenta and eaten with the right hand. Interesting. In West Africa, it all comes back to white corn. We call it the king of crops. And it's and used uh, right through, isn't it? It's used right through Africa. If it's fresh, you can cook it or boil it or roast it. Mm. When you grind it up like this, without taking the skin off, mm. it's called maize meal. When you take the skin off, it's called milli meal. So this how one do you is, cook this? Oh, just boil some water up and put it in the boiling water and uh, uh, stir it. Like polenta? Uh, like polenta without the sugar, yeah. without the cream, mm. just water. But until an African has eaten something like this, you don't feel full? I don't feel half it. That is what I eat every day. Without that, I think life will stop. <laughs> Black-eyed beans are the basis of many foods in Senegal, where Chef Bachi Dia was born and spent most of his life, before training as a chef in Paris and then arriving in Australia. Though he's mastered many cuisines, it's the recipes taught to him by his grandmother, who was an accomplished chef, that he holds most dear. What we're going to do today is Accra, the most vegetarian, vegan dish in the world. Accra is a dense, bready, textured fritter usually served with a vibrant capsicum and chilli dipping sauce. Bachi starts by soaking the beans in hot water for a couple of minutes to loosen their skins, a process he helps along by rubbing them together. So this is what's left, Bachi. That's an yeah. amazing process. Yeah. With the skin off, he pounds the beans in a mortar and pestle. That's it. That's it. Now we need to do a technique I love. It's <laughs> a flatter. You need the bowl on top of the boiling water, and you need to cook it through. And you take it out a little bit just to cool it down. Now what we need is to shape it. You just wet your hand mm -hmm. and grab some of the dough. Mm -hmm. And that's it, do that. Oh, that. one hand only, is it? And that, that's it. <laughs> Great, and that's it, that's it. Okay, I hope that's not a bad one. <laughs> no, it's a good one. Uh -huh. <laughs> and then we just grab it. Mm -hmm. In Senegal, these are cooked on every street corner. Yeah, every morning you can smell on the road, mm -hmm. in the market the smell of the beans. The brilliant red dipping sauce is made by boiling red capsicums, adding long red and bird's eye chilies. When that boil, you just close it for 15 minutes. Then peeling and blending them together. What a fabulous colour! Now we need to pass it through a fine strainer. Two tablespoons of sugar, two tablespoons of white vinegar. I put olive oil, because I love olive oil. Mm. Two tablespoons of olive oil, and teaspoon of salt. 
this <laughs> goes with Accra, goes with fish, goes with anything. Oh, great. So this is the all-purpose sauce of yeah. Senegal. Yeah. Cheers. Cheers. Mmm. That's a beautiful combination. Mmm. Mm. Eritrean, Sudanese and Somalian communities thank their stars when this bakery opened, producing the flat, spongy, griddle baked bread called injera. No meals eaten without it. Maftuha Osman says only women have the patience to bake the injera bread, which is made with either white, wholemeal or sorghum flour and fermented to give an airy, bubbly texture and a slightly sour flavour. It's used as an edible plate for most meals. Mostly this thing they don't use it for breakfast. They're using lunch and dinner. Lunch and dinner. It's oh, it's really... <gasps> it's so crispy. Look at that. Yeah. <laughs> It's nice. Mm. It's spongy on the top. Yeah. And a little bit sour. Yeah, it's but, oh, I love that crust. Yeah. Yum, yum. <laughs> and do only women do this baking? It is. It is. Really? On our tradition, the man, they don't like to cook in the kitchen, especially yeah. in the back country. <laughs> especially if I say for my husband, do this one, uh, ladies job, you know? <laughs> Abyssinia was the name Europeans gave to the Empire of Ethiopia, which stood strong for 700 years. The exotic-sounding name adopted by former Eritrean freedom fighter and now chef, Rahel Obagagish, for her Melbourne restaurant. One of her special dishes is kulwa, a fast, delicious dish made with lamb and served with injera. The kulwa is one of the most simple things. You know, you come from work. If mm. you have a small of these things nearby, you can have a dinner with your family in three, five minutes. We start with the onion and some tomato. You have to put everything at the same time. The chili. I love so much chili. So a little bit of oil. And a ghee. And then after that, I'll put the nice meat and a little bit of salt. That's it. It's in a high fire. That is how simple it is. So it's quite glossy with ghee. You like that sort of rich, buttery flavour, do you? Yeah, we really love oil. We grow up not eating many oil and not eating a lot of meat too, so we really crave rich flavours. <laughs> <laughs> now we can put a little bit of berbere, and that is what makes it different from the stew. Just at the end, I put more tomato. And finish. And we pour it in the middle of the plate. I love the colours too. Okay. okay, do you so want me to teach you how to please. eat it first? Please, try and start. Okay, so always we use the right hand. What you do is you have to grab a little bit of everything. You and? Have, you have to bite a bigger no cutlery. one. Oh, bigger than that? <laughs> am I being too girly, am I? All right. Mmm. <laughs> mmm. -mm. That is lovely. Thank you. Really nice. The east coast of Africa and the islands off the coast are referred to as the Swahili coast, after the predominant language spoken there. Shukri Abdi is from Somalia and grew up in Kenya before coming to Australia nine years ago, bringing with her a cuisine influenced by settlers from India, Persia, Portugal and the Arab world, as well as, of course, Africa. People sometimes joke back at home that the Swahili people would sit under a coconut tree and wait for the coconut tree <laughs> to, to fall. Sounds like an idyllic life. <laughs> so yeah, our cooking, we, we must have coconut mm -hmm. in everything. Mm -hmm. 
Shukri prefers coconut milk powder as it allows her to control the intensity of the coconut taste. So of course you can see this is very, very thick. So I'll just add water uh -huh. here. Now what I'm going to add next is some chopped onions, tomato puree, so you don't put a lot, you just put a, a little bit just for the taste. The only spice you put in this dish is turmeric. That's it. And as I told you, I never measure. No. <laughs> I remember uh, I started cooking when I was nine years old because it was the culture you have to learn how to cook. Otherwise, no one will marry you. <laughs> <laughs> and then a little bit of salt to taste. And what we do is just put it on, on low mm -hmm. so that it cooks slowly. We wait 10-15 um, minutes. Shukri likes to serve the corn with a lamb dish cooked simply with onion, tomato puree and red capsicum and a sweet cardamom spiced fried bread called mohamri. So the, immediately when it comes it floats up you just turn it and then it puffs up. So what you can do, there are two ways. You can either make a pocket or use your fingers. And I think I can feed you because I feed my, <laughs> I feed my boys with their fingers. Feed me. Mm. Mm. The coconut. What a beautiful combination. I can tell you food tastes better when you eat with your fingers. Mm. It tastes better when it's cooked by you. <laughs> Deswa has a favourite dish from home, it's jollof rice. The dish, she says, that has no rules. Jollof rice is close to my heart because I grew up with it. I ate it nearly every second day of my life. That's a lot. <laughs> and you still love it. And I still love it. To start, Kunle makes a sauce that will be mixed with the rice during cooking. It's called obayata, and it's made by blending fresh chopped tomatoes and in a separate bowl, red capsicum and fresh chilli. In red palm fruit oil, Kunle cooks eschalots, diced celery, spring onions and salt. I'm adding the tomato now, and I'm adding the capsicum and the chilli. So the flavour will come out. Uh, when it's cooked and when we add the marlin and everything, it's going to be a magnificent dish. Once the obayata sauce is made, Kunle cuts large cubes of fresh marlin, which are then sprinkled with dried crushed chilies. In his beloved red palm oil, he cooks carrot, red capsicum, chopped tomatoes and zucchini with some salt. We throw in the marlin. Then we put in our rice, then we stir it together gently so that everything is properly mixed. He adds the obayata sauce, turns the heat down and cooks the rice for 30 to 40 minutes. This is the finished product, Maeve. Wow. Now, this plantain, it will be there, like that. Taste it. If it's not good, complain quietly. <laughs> if it's good, just say, wow. Mm. That's lovely. Uh, you can mm. taste the vegetable, the fish and everything. But do you know what you can't taste? Yeah. All that chilli. Yeah, because uh, it's... It's just a mellow, lovely yeah, flavour. It's, it's just blended. It's absolutely lovely. Very 
Onions are the basis of one of the great dishes of Ethiopia and Eritrea, a stew called a wat, which starts with lots and lots of onions cooked in a pot with no fat or liquid. It starts off with uh, having a lot of onions in the pot and that reduces down to uh, what we have here at the moment. I'll just show you that. That was uh, to the brim. It's uh, amazing. Yeah. So what we'll do now is I uh, will add some olive oil. Here we really go. nice and glossy. This is the netrekebe. So this is the clarified uh, ghee that we've spiced. So I will need to add some barbare to that. So about seven tablespoons. What? Three. Wow. <laughs> Four. Five, six. Now I'll just stop on the sixth one there. I've never seen so much <laughs> spice being added. Give it a bit of a mix. Now I know why it's called red cooked chicken. <laughs> <laughs> so we'll grab some of our chicken. It's a whole chicken that's been skinned it and has. segmented. Yep. Can you see the colours of the oil? It's intense. <laughs> it's fantastic. Turn the heat down a bit because you don't want it ultimately to uh, crush to the bottom of the pan. Looks very nice. Let's cover that. Well, here are the spices. My favourite of them all, the cardamom pod seeds. Oh, beautiful. Uh, Najela seeds as well. This is called uh, tukurazmut. Wow. There we go. Go some ajwan now. Similar to a fennel seed. It gives it the, the spicy kick that it needs. African basil leaf as well. And that's the leaves plus the actual seeds. And that's uh, peppercorn. And then we just grind that down. Tea enough for your weed. <laughs> Let's give it a good shake every now and then. And now you can add a bit of that. You sprinkle it over the top so it doesn't stick together. And some salt to season. Now we'll just slide in some of our, our eggs. If you drop so it in there, soak up that's the just going to soak a lot of the oil. So just drop them along the side. Get some of our lovely injera, which mm -hmm. is right here. Let's just get a bit more of that rich sauce. Oh. My mouth's watering. You want to try? I'll have a little bit. Ooh. Here we go. Ooh, it is. Oh, it is. Mmm. Is that good? Mmm. Such <laughs> flavour. Mmm. Oh, my <laughs> heavens. That's a great dish. I love it. In the Horn of Africa, the pace of life is slower and having coffee with someone takes a couple of hours. Even far from home, Ruta Obagagish still has coffee the traditional way every afternoon, complete with a soft, sweet bread she bakes called himbasha and the burning of the ancient aromatic gum resin called frankincense. And so freshly roasted coffee is for you the best taste on earth? The best. Definitely. Yeah. <laughs> Put it here just to cool down and to grind it. Yeah. And start grinding. And after that, we have to put it inside the pot. This is a dry ginger that we use for coffee. And it's very good because it has good flavor to the coffee. And, and we put water inside. It boils slowly. And that's it. Okay. Now, try your coffee. Mm. It's a really beautiful, right. mellow coffee. That ginger's really, I would never yes. put that with coffee. Yes. That's great. Mm. Dancing. <laughs> On our next safari, Syrian food in all its delicious, fresh glory. From meza dishes to the national dish yeah. of kibbe, plus some luscious sweets. Uh, from then on, it's adding your chicken. Just making sure you keep you know, an eye on the level of oil and uh, water mm. as well, so it doesn't stick to the bottom of the pot. Mm. And from then on, Bob's your uncle. <laughs> <laughs> What's that in Ethiopian? <laughs> <laughs> in Ethiopian. Hey, <laughs> Bob. <laughs>